In case you've been living under a rock, you would know that the talk of the town is now AI. And the number one debate that us musicians have is why is AI here? Is it to take our jobs or is it just to help us be more efficient and work faster? And for those of you that despise AI and you don't want to hear anything about it, you don't want to incorporate it into your workflow, you don't even want to watch this video because you're tired of hearing about it, do not tune out just yet. I've heard a lot of powerful, significant people say that AI will change the world more than the internet. So if that's the claim and that's true, then I think even if you do not want to incorporate AI into your workflow because you've been playing your guitar for 20 years, you took 10,000 hours to learn your DAW, you know your sound, you know who you are as a musician. I completely agree with you and I feel those are the things that every musician should aspire to do. However, if we're just talking about AI from an educational standpoint, that's what this video is about. I just wanna give you guys the information, show you where AI is, where AI is going, how you can possibly incorporate it into your workflow, whether you want to or not. My job as an educator is just to give you guys the raw, give you guys the info. I can give you my opinion on it too. And then you take that and do what you will with it, right? So whether or not you wanna incorporate it into your workflow, that's completely subjective. Do I incorporate it into my workflow? A little bit, sometimes, depending on what I'm working on. But I feel like those musicians that I've spent 20 years on my craft, I've put in 40,000 hours, forget 10,000 hours. I've put in 10,000 hours as a DJ, 10,000 hours as a music producer, 10,000 hours as an audio engineer. That's why I'm even qualified to teach these things, right? And musicians like myself, we definitely feel like you should aspire to do that, put in the work into your craft. But after researching the main AI culprits, platforms like Suno, and hearing what their mission statement is and what their CEO has to say, I kind of changed my opinion on things because I realized that they're not here just to help the professional musician be more efficient and work faster. They're actually here for the opposite reason. And I'll let him tell it. We didn't just want to build, let's say, a company that makes uh, the current crop of creators 10% faster or makes it 10% easier to make music. If you want to impact the way a billion people experience music, you have to build something for a billion people. That is first and foremost giving everybody the joys of creating music. And this is a huge departure from how it is now. It's not really enjoyable to make music now. People enjoy Why'd you Suno. Say that? It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. You need to get really good at an instrument or really good at a piece of production software. I think the majority of people don't enjoy the majority of the time they spend making music. Do you not think that's like running? It is hard to run. It is painful to run. You don't particularly enjoy it, but you love running and you uh, get good at it and you get better at it and you speak to the runners and they love running. Most people drop out of that pursuit because it was hard. I think that the people that you know that run uh, this is a, a highly uh, biased selection of the population that fell in love with it. So that was Mikey Shulman, the CEO of the main culprit here, the the biggest uh, music generating AI platform that been going viral thanks to people like Timberland. Timberland got accused of taking other people's music because the way that AI works is you feed the application a bunch of information. Let's say funk, right? We feed it James Brown. We feed it Sly and the Family Stone. We feed it Prince. We feed it all of this, right? Catalogs and decades of music and it learns all of this music and all the intricacies and all the details and the sophistication of the music so when you ask this platform for a funk record it just spits it all back out right and i know some of you may be thinking that's not very different from how humans learn right like for instance if i want to study soul music right i'm going to study who stevie wonder james brown donny hathaway Al Green, and then we could go into the 90s and we could talk about D'Angelo, Maxwell, the Neo Soul Movement, Erica Badu and things like this, right? And I'm going to take all of that music in, absorb it, listen to the arrangements, listen to the vibe, the feel, the flow. And the more I consume that music, the more I'm going to understand it. And then I'm going to apply it to my productions and my songwriting. And then the more I make it, the more I'm going to understand it as well, right? So technically, that's actually how the AI app is working. They're feeding it a bunch of information. And this thing is learning human emotion, human expression, and it just spits it right back out, right? 
But the argument, of course, is humans have a soul. We have life experience. We have inspiration. The, the reason we come up with these genres and styles and words and passion and emotion is because this is our life, right? Like we're, we're living these experiences out. And then the music, the song is our way of communicating our emotions to other people, right? And we hope people connect to that. And when people come to the concert, that's what we're really doing, right? We're connecting. We're communicating. That's what music is really all about to me. If I had to define it very simply, it would just be about connection. But that's how I feel as a musician, right? Now, the CEO of Suno believes that music is painful. The process of making music is painful. That process of putting in the 10,000 hours, learning music theory, learning an instrument, learning a DAW, that could be a lifetime pursuit for you to create amazing professional quality music, right? So the owner of Suno is saying he wants to solve that problem for billions of people. The pain point is actually becoming a great musician and making a great song. And he wants to expedite that whole entire process for billions of people and just be able to generate a great quality song in 30 to 60 seconds. That's really his objective. Those are the words out of his own mouth. So we can end the debate here if it's just to make the professional musician more efficient or if it's to help billions of people that aren't musicians make great quality songs. He already has stated that it's just here to help billions of people who are not musicians make their own songs. That is the goal of the app, and that is from the horse's mouth. So if you hear something different on the internet, if you hear something different from Timbaland and things like that, by the way, Timbaland is a legend, but I do not agree with a lot of things that have been happening lately. I don't want to dive too deep into that because, again, the intent of this video is not really to slander or criticize anyone. It's really just to give you guys a scoop. You know what I'm saying? I want, my, I need my students to know what's up. And I need for you guys to not only know what's up, but what's coming, right? I want to prepare you guys for what's to come. So I care about giving you guys the information. I, I'll incorporate my opinion a little bit throughout this, but I'm not here to name call or slander anybody because I just think that's corny and not helpful, right? And Timberland is an absolute legend with legendary catalog i grew up listening to timberland i can't just you know what i mean negate all of that and erase his entire contribution to hip-hop and music as a whole he's a human being at the same time human beings make mistakes you know i'm not here to slander and another point i want to emphasize is that mikey shulman also says that us musicians that dedicated our lifetime to this craft and been through the pain points and, and went through the painful process and the 10,000 hours over and over again to learn an instrument, to learn music theory, to learn a DAW, to learn music production, to learn mixing, he feels like we're rare. We're a small, very small percentage of the population. So he's not catering to us. He clearly stated that he's not catering to us. Yes, you can use the tool to help you with your workflow and be a little more efficient if you're already a professional and you already know what you're doing. But he clearly and boldly said that he is not catering to us. He's catering to the billions of people that want to make a great high quality song, but don't want to go through the entire process of learning an instrument, learning music theory, learning a DAW. Now, with all that being said, we kind of answered the question in the beginning, right? I told you that the main debate is this just helping musicians professional musicians be more efficient or is this opening the floodgates to anyone in the world making a song anytime they want no matter their talent or skill level so he clearly states out of his own mouth that it's the latter we're talking about the second one we're talking about billions of people making high quality songs whether they have the talent the skill the knowledge of the craft or not that is his goal and it's clearly stated. An analogy I like to use a lot, I'm not personally a guitar player, but the analogy I like to use is if I just spent 20 years playing the guitar, learning the guitar, shredding through scales, learning jazz scales every morning, doing solos, and, and I've dedicated my life to this, and then you come and tell me that there's a guitar plugin that sounds exactly like a real guitarist and I no longer need to play the guitar, how do you think I would react to that? Or if you 
Bob Ross is no longer living, but if you if you told a painter that he doesn't need to paint anymore because there's an app that does that now. How do you think a painter that dedicated his whole life to a craft would react to that? Most times we would tell you that we're here for the process. We're not trying to expedite the process because we love the process and we're here for the process. When we're in the studio, songwriting, making a beat. These things are therapy for us. We're expressing ourselves. We're getting things off our chest. You understand? So we love the process. That's why we can spend 10, 12 hours in the studio every day. And if you don't love the process of songwriting, of performing, of recording, of building an arrangement with other musicians and producers, if you don't love all of that, and that's not like the main place where you want to be. I just argue that why are you in music in the first place? Why are you a musician? You don't love the actual act of being a musician. You don't love the lifestyle. You don't love the process. So why are you a musician in the first place? If you're just here for the money, the fame, popularity, trophies, and the glory, I, I think that you should question why you're here in the first place, you know? Because this is a craft to us. It's the art form that we dedicate our lives to. And, and real musicians love the process. They, they Sitting there, going through scales and, and learning them, it's gratifying, it's rewarding, it feels good, it, it's therapeutic, you get stuff off your chest. Like all of that is important to us, right? So we're not trying to like cut that out or expedite that. I want to make that super duper clear because I think that's what distinguishes a real musician from a non-musician, right? Now, if the general population just wants to be able to generate a song for fun. Cool. What does that mean for us real musicians though, right? Does that mean we're out of a job? Does that impact the music industry? Is there going to be oversaturation and overflow? And, and if a consumer is listening to Pandora and streaming music and an AI, completely AI generated song pops up right next to a human made song and they're sort of equivalent in quality because AI has learned human emotion and learn how to produce mix and master as a human would. So the quality is not very different. The average ear, the consumer, now if the consumer accepts that and they're jamming to the AI song and it's just as good as the last song made by a human, that's what's going to change everything. Now, if, if the consumer accepts this as an acceptable product and they're consuming it just as much as they are the human music, I really think we have a problem because now the label doesn't have to pay you. The label doesn't have to negotiate with you. The label doesn't have to come to an agreement with you. The label doesn't even have to use humans. Now, if we get there, yes, I believe that human-made music has a problem. Not only because a lot of musicians, producers, audio engineers will lose jobs, but then I also think innovation stops because innovation comes from human experience human emotions, human culture, human environments, right? So if we remove all of that, AI is just going to be regurgitating what humans have already done. Some sort of like remixed, remade version of everything that we've already done, right? And if that's all it's really doing, that kills like innovation for music in general, in my opinion, right? Those are the two negative ways that it could really impact the music industry. A lot of musicians could be out of work. And then the second one is just music is just not interesting anymore because there's no innovation, nothing new coming out. It's just regurgitated, remade, uh, old human ideas being recycled. But then again, just to play devil's advocate, how can billions of people that aren't technically musicians generating millions of songs a day, how can that be a good thing? How can that be positive for the music or the music industry in general. If we think about like insight developments, you said to me before, music should more closely resemble a video game in the future. I thought this was a fascinating analogy or comparison. Why should it resemble a video game? The thing about video games is that they're interactive, they're engaging, they're rich experiences, they're, they're fun by yourself, they're more fun with your friends. And when I think about what music should be for me, uh, it should be all of those things. In that sense, I wanna make 
music more like a video game. Nobody half plays video games the same way people kind of put on music in the background and half pay attention to it. Um, and then the other way is I think if you accomplish all those things and if you make music interactive and you make music engaging, people will pay for it like they pay for video games. And I'm sure I don't need to tell you that the video game industry is so much bigger than the music industry and, and most other industries. And it's because people have no problem parting with their hard-earned money to experience those things. And to me, it seems like just crazy that music should not be as engaging as Fortnite. Ghost!